Hello, this is Jean Marie Ward for BuzzyMultimedia.com. With me today is Terry Brooks, Dragon Con's guest of honor and the New York Times best-selling author of nearly 30 books in the Legends of Shannara series. Welcome, Terry. Thank you. Nice to be here. I've got to ask, you've had 28 books, almost 30, soon to be 30, in the Legends of Shannara series. After so many books and so many adventures, how do you keep the writing from becoming stale? Well, there's a couple different things you can do, and uh, one of them is when you get bored is to walk away and do something else. So uh, over the years, I've uh, written a couple other series, uh, Magic Kingdom for Sale and also The Word and Void. And in addition, I've got a book on writing called uh, Sometimes the Magic Works, and I took the Star Wars project uh, when uh, George Lucas asked if I would uh, be interested in doing that for The Phantom Menace. All those things are interspersed with writing the main series in my, in my professional career, and that helps uh, give you a chance to recharge your batteries in between sets. Do you ever get surprised by your writing, uh, or are you one of these people who sit down to the keyboard and say, I know what's happening every step of the way? Well, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it, if I could actually say that I knew <laughs> what was happening every step of the way. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't live like that, number one, and uh, even professionally it'd be hard to do. I think writing is fluid. Um, what I write suggests what is, needs to be written next. Uh, so for me, uh, from in a book and from book to book, actually, uh, it's a process that tells me what I need to do as I go along. So I try to put enough together that I know the the beginning of the story and my characters and I always write to a particular ending in between uh, it's you know what it needs to be as I'm going along. So you don't particularly work from an outline you carry it in your head and you know the beginning and the ending? Well I, I write from an outline but not from a, a concrete in, set in stone type of outline uh, so I know I know my characters well enough that if you were to ask me what they would do in a situation I could tell you uh, in a particular situation, and I, I'm working in a, in a certain level when I write about where the story needs to go and what it needs to be about, and I, I, that's what is kind of my guidepost for getting through it. Mm -hmm. uh, when yeah. you sat down to write The Sword of Shannara, did you know that you were positing a future instead of a past? No. Um, I was writing in, a, when I started that uh, series, I was writing in the imaginary world of the Four Lands uh, about peoples and conditions that were totally unrelated to this world. That was my mindset at the time. It was only, you know, what, t t a dozen, fifteen books in uh, to the series uh, that I began to think about the possibility of it being uh, a future of this particular world after the cataclysm of the Great Wars, um, even though I will say that for years readers had been asking me, is this this world that you're writing about? Is it this world you're writing about or some other world? And my standard response was, well, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always a, always a good response because they will think of plenty, plenty things. Um, I understand that the Sword of Shannara has a very interesting publishing history that you sold to somebody who didn't buy fantasy. Um, well, I don't know about that. I, I, what happened, and it's a, it's, it's, I'll have to give you the 25-word version, was um, after it went to one publisher, he told me to take it to the Del Reyes, uh, Lester and Judy Lynn, who had just come in at uh, Ballantine Books to run the science fiction fantasy uh, division. And Judy Lynn had been hired as editor-in-chief, so I sent the book to her on the recommendation of Donald Wolheim. And she took it home to her husband, uh, Lester, and he, ha he was not at that point working uh, for them, but had been asked to come in as a, an editor uh, specializing in fantasy and so forth. So to make a long story short, uh, Lester decided that he wanted to make this a uh, trial balloon in the field of fantasy, which in general publishers believed was not a major best-selling field, but was just kind of a minor field, and you could sell 5,000 copies, 12,000 copies maybe of a book, but that was going to be it. 
and Lester believed it, they could be bestsellers, just like anything else. And he, he used sort of Shannara to prove that. And it did prove it. It, it was, did. As far as I know, it is the first speculative fiction to have hit the New York Times bestseller list. Yeah, they were smart. They published it in trade paperback, and trade paperback at that time was Maps and The Joy of Sex and things of that sort, uh, a lot of nonfiction cooking and so forth, and he, they put it out. Uh, as a trade paperback, and it uh, went on that list uh, right away, and it stayed there for, I don't know, half a year or something like that. Of all the wonderful characters you've explored and developed over the years, do you have a favorite child? I, I, they're all my children. Uh, I have to say, uh, it's very hard for me to say one character means more to me than another character. They all mean something in the context of when I created them and then in the story in which they play a role. Uh, so I, I like them for what they are in the story that they're in. Um, I, I have feelings about what it took to create that character. Some were much easier to write about than others. Some came, uh, became more difficult. Uh, they all serve different purposes. Uh, they all mean something to me. Uh, and they are like children. That's a, probably a good way of talking about it. So uh, uh, other than to say that uh, Ben Holiday in Magic Kingdom is m is modeled after me, that character. <laughs> um, other than that, it's uh, it's pretty much they're just they're all just people that I've uh, become close to. And you always have a sneaking fondness for the characters modeled after yourself, if for yeah. no other reason they're easier to write. Uh, yeah, I mean you know he's a lawyer he's a lawyer in the story he speaks with my voice he has my background. Uh, and so yeah, I was able to do that with that particular story because it's essentially autobiographical uh, in a metaphorical sense. So uh, in, in that regard, he was a little easier to write about than some, and I felt maybe a little bit closer to him in, in a lot of ways. Uh, but I don't feel any stronger about him as a successful character than many of the other characters that were created without uh, any particular reference to me. Uh, speaking of children, uh, you were famous for having a very wonderful family life and a very full writing life at the same time. How do you balance the two? Yeah, well, I have an extended family, my wife's family mostly. Uh, we have a blended family of four real children and one fake child, as we're always saying. <laughs> uh, and we have many, many people that we're uh, associated with on the road and, and uh, in our writing lives that uh, are part of our extended family, I guess. So. Um, yeah, much of what I do is in, is is connected with with the family, and uh, we, we we do a lot of things together. We're very close. Um, I came from a family that was small, uh, a parent, two parents, and uh, a sister. Um, so I like the idea of having 30 people show up for an event. That would never have happened in my childhood. So yeah, we're we we are quite close, and and the balancing is a, is a trickier thing to do uh, for for me. I'm I'm famous for going upstairs and in my office and disappearing for weeks, you know, that kind of thing, uh, except when I get hungry. <laughs> so uh, periodically I have to be dragged out kicking and screaming and told it's time to go back into the real world now and spend pay some attention to your family and uh, maybe come down and visit with your children. They'd like to see you again. <laughs> uh, that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, you, 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 the tendency when you're a writer is to, is to shut all that out and it's not a good thing. Uh, you need to be in the real world. What's next for you in terms of uh, your writing? Well, I'm at work on a, a three-book set uh, that uh, I'll start publishing next uh, August in the future of Shannara, rather than in the prehistory, since mm -hmm. I'm going back and forth. And those three books will be on the uh, follow on the heels of uh, the books in High Druid of Shannara. Mm -hmm. um, and after that's uh, complete, uh, which I expect to actually finish up by next spring, uh, I will write a book that is not connected to anything I've done before. That is an entirely new uh, Terry Brooks book. Um, and I have high expectations for it. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm not talking about it because uh, I think it's bad luck to talk about something before you've written it. Fair enough. Um, but it will be close enough to what I've done before that it'll be recognizable at least. As and a Terry Brooks book. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going off and, and, and writing uh, romance, for example, or contemporary uh, fiction. So it'll still be have the elements of the stories that I've been writing all along. Okay, cool. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to add to our viewers? Well, I, you know, maybe the only thing I'd say is that uh, my wife is always saying, uh, you have the best fans in the world. They are 
great when they come out. They're supportive. Uh, they are well behaved. They are knowledgeable. Um, you hear a lot about riders uh, having problems with fans and, and, and difficulties arising through the relationship of rider to fan, and I don't have any of that. Uh, and uh, I'm very pleased about that. I'm close to my fans through my work, uh, which is the way it should be, um, and they are very supportive of me in the way that uh, I, would, I had hoped they would be. Um, and uh, I, I, I couldn't ask for a, a better set of people uh, to be reading my work and supporting it. Thank you. I'm sure they're, they're just going to be so pumped to hear that. Uh, but thank you for talking to us today. You're welcome. And thank you viewers at BuzzyMultimedia.com. This is Jean Marie Ward signing off.